What's up YouTube, Zombie Self here, taking a look at the Enforcer's Battle Rifles in Hardline. As with the Operator and Mechanic videos, check out Simtic.com for all the detailed stats, accuracy plots, and updates. This is just an overview. And I need to apologize for confusing the vertical and stubby grips in the Mechanic video. The stubby grip is for full auto fire, the vertical grip is for shooting while moving. Anyway, on to the Battle Rifles. Note that only two of the guns, the HK-51 and SCAR-H, have the option to equip a stock, which functions the same as a stubby grip, reducing the spread penalty for full automatic fire. And none of them have the option to equip an extended magazine. Where shotguns are limited to close range, the battle rifles are incredibly flexible. However, they're not great in any particular thing. They are the heaviest hitting fully automatic guns in the game, but that of course comes with a lot of recoil. Even at those slower rates of fire, at a medium range, the recoil is just too much. So I found myself really preferring to use these guns in semi-automatic mode, looking for fights at medium to longer ranges, and then switching back into full automatic mode when impressed and the situation calls for it. It is entirely possible to use these guns just like heavier hitting assault rifles. Throw on a low zoom scope, probably a stubby grip, maybe a stock, if it's an option, a muzzle breaker compensator, and yeah, it works. I just find the range that that really works well at to be incredibly limited. Still don't want to get too close for fear of shotguns and PDWs, other weapons just with a higher rate of fire, even if they do take an extra shot or even two to kill. And so I was missing out on the big advantage of the battle rifles, and that is their flexibility. What's worked best for me has been using them in semi-automatic mode with the 2x FLIR sight, heavy barrel, and angled grip, which reduces the first shot recoil multiplier, and in semi-automatic mode, every shot's the first shot, and so it counts on every shot. And the first shot multiplier is normally only 1.1, so with the angled grip, it becomes less than 1. So you end up with less recoil in semi-automatic mode, even if you were firing at the full automatic rate of fire. And frankly, if you use the battle rifles like this, there isn't a great deal of difference between most of them. A lot of those recoil and spread numbers are fairly minimally different when you're just in semi-automatic mode all the time. But let's go ahead and take a look at all four battle rifles' individual stats and see what somewhat differentiates them at least. All of them have the same 43 to 25 damage profile, which would be 3 to 4 hits to kill normally, unless you hit a, an extremity with a lower multiplier and then maybe it'll take 5 at longer ranges. The H car really stands out from the rest of the pack for having a much larger magazine, 30 rounds instead of the typical 20. It also has lower recoil numbers than all the other battle rifles. However, the spread increase per shot is quite high and it has a low fully automatic rate of fire. In semi-automatic, I find that rate of fire to be perfectly acceptable. However, it's one of the battle rifles without the option to equip a stock, and so if you want to reduce that spread increase per shot, that's going to cost you your grip slot, and you're not going to be able to equip the angled grip. It's a trade-off. I often find myself using this with a 3.4x scope and the angled iron sights, especially in hot wire where I'm just riding around as a passenger, swapping over to those iron sights uh, when doing a drive-by on another car. If only they let you use the angled iron sights from the hip. <laughs> that would be silly, wouldn't it? At first glance, the HK-51 looks like it's mostly just about faster spread and recoil recovery numbers, with a penalty of a slightly lower aim down sights accuracy and a somewhat high spread increase per shot. However, it does have the option to equip a stock, making that spread increase less of a factor. A heavy barrel means the lower ADS accuracy isn't really a big deal, and as a lot of these weapons go, there's just a variation in uh, recoil patterns and spread increases. The HK-51 has a slightly lower vertical recoil, but some more side-to-side -side recoil. That means the heavy barrel and muzzle brake are reasonable choices, but not the compensator because it increases side-to-side -side recoil, and the HK-51 already has plenty of that. But what really makes the HK-51 unique is the option to burst fire. However, I'm going to suggest that you not use it. I find the range at which the burst fire is really optimal to be extremely limited, and actually there's a better option if you plan on burst firing this weapon, and that is to simply fire two round bursts in fully automatic mode, and the slow rate of fire means that's easily doable. That of course assumes that you're using an angled grip, but here let me show you what I mean. This is the same thing I talked about in the operator video. The first shot multiplier is applied to the last shot of a burst when a weapon's in burst fire mode. Except with the angled grip, the first shot multiplier ends up being less than one. And so it's actually more accurate to burst fire in full auto mode than it is to use the burst fire mode. 
I started out with the burst fire there on the left and then I went to bursting in full auto mode on the right and you can see very clearly that full auto mode is more accurate. Again, you need the angled grip to do that, but that's how I run these guns. The SA-58 OSW's claim to fame is ridiculously high bullet velocity. It also has the highest rate of fire of any of the battle rifles. That, seriously, the Scout Elite 640 meters per second, highest in the professional class. The SA-58 OSW, 840. That means bullet drop and having to lead targets are much less of an issue for this gun. And I think it, in a lot of ways, really epitomizes what these guns are about. Either semi-auto, long-range sniping, or just dealing with ridiculous amounts of recoil with close ranges. Where the H-Car, a cop weapon, has low recoil but high spread increase per shot, the Scar H, the cop's other choice for battle rifle, goes the other way. Lots of vertical recoil, but very low spread increase per shot, and the option to equip a stock to decrease that even further. This one I'm not real big on because that high vertical recoil, while it's not a huge issue, it means I do need to be careful to moderate my rate of fire, especially at longer ranges. And if I'm doing that, the spread increase per shot isn't going to be nearly as much a factor. So there's nothing wrong with it, I just don't see a particular selling point to this gun. Unfortunately, right now, I just don't see a lot of interesting variety in these weapons, and I'm not sure how they get it. They're really defined by that 43 to 25 damage profile, and it's quite effective. I wonder how low they'd have to drop the rate of fire to make recoil not as much a factor at those middle ranges so that it could really straight up compete with a lot of assault rifles and carbines. Because right now, if I try to do that in full auto mode, it's just not worth it because the bullets go everywhere. It also kind of surprises me that the first DLC, Criminal Activity, is going to include two new battle rifles. The preliminary stats on Simthic show very high spread increase per shot and quite a bit of vertical recoil. I assume that means they can equip stocks, but we may take a look at those after the DLC comes out at the end of June. I want to thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was useful. Be sure to check out Simthic.com for the great stats, I mean it's, it's an amazing resource for Battlefield. And I will see you next time.